Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Zaza Jirade, and today's guest is Deborah Jensen. She helps entrepreneurs to get over their procrastination and everything that holds them back from effortless productivity so that they can increase their revenue, get more done in less time, and feel a lot happier. Deborah, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to hear, have you here today because what you do, it just, um, I think just about every one of us needs to hear. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, really? It's I just can't wait uh, for you to explain a bit more about what you do. So tell me, how how do you help your people? Who do you help, first of all? Let's start with this. Well, I I help entrepreneurs who are exceptionally busy, as it is. Um, and, you know, they have plenty to do. Uh, probably most of them are working way too hard. And they're overwhelmed and, um, you know, sometimes unhappy and stressed and um, frustrated because they're not getting the things done that they would like to get done in the time that they have. And then, again, if they have a, a problem with procrastination, which actually almost everyone has, whether they know it or not, then they start feeling badly about themselves Um you know, there's some self-loathing that goes into the mix, too, because, you know, their families are dependent on them and what they do in the workspace, and so they start feeling guilty about it. And I just would like to tell you and your listeners, uh, you know, people don't really have to – I hope you that all of you don't feel guilty about things like this because – um, there, if you only knew the way out of procrastination, then of course you wouldn't be procrastinating. Um, and it's, it's pretty easy to get out of it as long as you know some tools. So, yeah, it's kind of, it's, 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 it's a, yeah, it's, I think it's a very, um, it's a very, uh, recurrent subject. And, and, and most of us do feel bad about the fact that we procrastinate. And as you said, um, as you said, the business people, I mean, when we entrepreneurs, we're just so busy. There are just not enough hours in our days um, to do all the things that we feel that we must do. Um, so it is, um, it is a constant uh, uh, reminder uh, of something that we, la- you know, like it's lack. We're lacking something because we're not, mm-hmm. we're not managing to do all the things that we are deci- have decided we're supposed to do. So it, it generates this um, negative feeling. Yes, and there's something actually called, it's research, and it's called goal neglect. So oftentimes people feel very, you know, sad and, and stressed that they haven't met their goals. And it actually has to do with a part of the brain which isn't functioning at peak performance. And the reason it's not functioning oftentimes is because of the stress that we're all under, and um, it's called the executive functioning of the brain. And and guess what it has control over? It has control over whether we can plan ahead to meet our goals or whether we can focus to meet our goals. And so, of course, when, when that part goes down, and not completely, you know, but partially, then the very things that we need, you know, the skills and um, the capabilities that we need to to meet our goals, we don't have access to. Isn't that just wild? Yeah, yeah that's crazy. But it's very yeah. interesting. Uh, so, how, so, so, what, how do you help? Um, how do you help these business people um, get over o- over this? Well, um, number one, I I had a uh, an alternative uh, neuro health center and education center for many years and so we actually helped a lot of people with um add and adhd and close head injuries and and also um business people uh professional athletes we we had fun with those getting them to the top in the world and so we knew some ways alternative ways to help exercise the brain and so that's part of what 
we do. Um, there's something called neuroplasticity. Uh, have you heard of it? Um, actually, I, I have because I, I follow um, John Asaraf's um, nice. okay. program. Good. Good. So um, I think we were one of the first centers in our area to know that there was such a thing, so I'm pleased about that. And now because of all the football, the uh, NFL football studies, they it's common knowledge that the brain just does not have to degenerate as we age or, you know, as we live, but it can actually be regenerated. And we can do that by doing different types of exercises um, to build new neural pathways. Mm-hmm. And so we use that. We we actually use some of the exercises that um, we've used over the years with with many people, uh, you know, including people who had uh, ADD or ADHD, because it it works with all of us. Everybody is under um, such tremendous stress, and so it's kind of amazing that um, you know some of the exercises can actually work for everything, <laughs> pretty much. And so we're working with mindset and, you know, changing that, reducing stress a lot, and also giving these exercises to help a person to retrain the brain um, so that they can use that wonderful neuroplasticity to their their highest benefit. Um, A lot of people have read just a little bit now about neuroplasticity, and that's good, but you know, it's kind of like knowing a little about a little bit about any subject. Sometimes you do your best, but you don't know quite the exercises to do. So, so the ones that people are doing sometimes are actually not helping them. Yeah, I I agree with you. Sometimes it's too much on the surface, and 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 for that you will need to go a little bit deeper into the subject. So, so Deborah, what what are the two three problems that you solved? Um, for your your clients, um, you mentioned procrastination is already, um, which can be really paralyzing. Mm-hmm. What other what other um, problems um, would you solve for them? Well, you know, it's interesting. People again, a lot of things seem to go away um, as as we're doing these processes for people, like. A lot of people get over a lot of their self-loathing um, because they're, you know, they're very productive and they're feeling really happy. So some of their hap- unhappiness goes away. Um, many times their feelings of failure go away. Um, mm-hmm. and, 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 of course, their feelings that they have let their loved ones down. And also their um, their ability to concentrate increases tremendously. And um, I don't know if I've told you, but there's a famous coach named Bill Barron, and he has um, done some research apparently or has heard some research about uh, people's concentration. And he says that in the last five years, um, humanity has lost 70% of their ability to concentrate. So... That's, oh, interesting. Yeah, that's a big skill that we then teach because, um, you know, we're giving people focusing exercises. And so their concentration becomes radically different. I think the best way that I can describe it to people these days um, is it's it's almost like speeding up the brain, um, you know, to the speed of a Lamborghini instead of, instead of an old Model T. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, but it's the the more stressed people become and sort of the more lethargic the brain becomes. And remember the brain is, you know, it's a muscle. Yes. And it's like every other muscle that in in the body, if we use it, it it serves us. And if we don't, well, it doesn't serve us so much. And eventually uh can really start causing some problems for us. So we're exercising that muscle and um in doing so, again, everything gets faster and easier. And, um, you know, it's kind of like if it, kind of an analogy is I know that I could exercise my my midriff a little more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? 
And if it were more toned, uh, and it, again, this is not my area. I'm just using it as an example. But, you know, you can lift things better and you can move better through space, um, you know, if you were to talk to someone that actually knows all about that. And it just, it serves you in so many ways. But then when a person gets overweight, um, you know, they they get into trouble because the things that that part of the body assists with normally, um, it's not, it's just not working. Mm. Yeah, it's very interesting. Now, would you say that um, perhaps there's a little bit of a um, tendency for business owners to be perfectionists as well when, you know, when they're stressed out and they try to do everything? Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 And I'm, by the way, I'm not, I'm not laughing at the business owners at all. I'm laughing because it is a human condition, isn't it? Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's that's a really interesting thing because and it is one of the major mindset things that we work with by the way. Um because in all of my years of working with people, I found out found that that is one of one of the big ones uh, that holds people back. We are always striving for per- perfection which there really really does not exist pretty much and yeah and we um also and well if you think about it too if you um you know watch a lot of um movies or you know something like that or advertisements you see the perfect people oftentimes in the perfect cars who go to their perfect houses you know what i'm saying yes Um, and so even if we think that we're not perfectionists we probably are at some level and so um that's also part of what all of this is about is that if this were all conscious then all of us would have the lives that we want um you know every day of our life but most of it is actually subconscious and you know all of those advertisements have gone in year after year, decade after decade. And so there's a part of us that that thinks we have to be uh, perfect kind of or else, you know, and the or else is what, what gets us in trouble. Yes, yes, that's that's so true. That's so true. Now, um, it's, it's uh, the procrastination subject, I mean, um, many people don't even think it's possible to reduce this. They, they, they feel that it's just, that's just the way it is. Um, and not to mention, um, never having it, having to face it again. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's, is this part of the misconceptions that, that, that your clients may have before they understand what it is that you can do for them? Yes, it definitely is. Um, um, I, it kind of reminds me, I know it's totally different, but it reminds me of the neuroplasticity. Um, before we knew that it existed, people just expected that their brains would have to, have to degenerate because that was based on some of the old science. Yes. And so even though their brains could have done better if they had known, they didn't do any of the brain exercises to keep their brains active and in shape. So a lot of their brains did just degenerate. And it's kind of like, um, in a way like this procrast- procrastination. Um, it, we can get through pra- procrastination easily pretty much these days. And a lot of times the reason people are procrastinating are, well, there are a few of them for sure, but most of it actually is subconscious. So yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, most people I think are aware, at least consciously, that that sometimes they might have um, you know, challenges around fearing that they'll be a failure. Mm-hmm. Um so they might even look into that. But a lot of people uh have no idea that they also might fear success at a subconscious level. 
And so the closer they get to being successful, and maybe they even are successful, but when they get to a certain level, um, if there's a fear of success, that will kick in subconsciously and suddenly things will start going awry. Um, like, you know, what better way not to succeed than to procrastinate? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So a, pe- a person will just start feeling, you know, less and less good or tired or, you know, however that shows up, but it's really something subconscious. Um, I spoke with a gentleman yesterday, actually, and he he said he just, he didn't know why he didn't feel well. And I'm not talking about, um, you know, physically, but just he he said he just didn't really have any motivation and and so I asked him if he you know if something had happened in his life recently that might make him feel that way and he said no he feels that way frequently and again to me that's just like a really big red flag that something is going on subconsciously otherwise if your life is going well why wouldn't you feel great hmm Yes, interesting. And I'm sure a lot of listeners can um, relate to what you're saying um, mm-hmm. because sometimes we just don't know why um, we're not, you know, doing what it is that we should be doing or why we're not feeling great um, when we should. And it just um, becomes this uh, soup of things we don't understand and negative emotions and, as you said, self-loathing. And it doesn't um, really get any better. It just uh, we're just sort of going around in circles. Right. And, and, uh, yeah. yeah. So how how you also talked about focus, and that's very interesting because um, it, I think most people don't don't realize that you can do something to help focus. That you, there are exercises that can be done. That's. Um, I mean, Definitely. when I hear this, you bet. Ev- 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 everyone, uh, no matter what age, <laughs> could use um, exercises to focus. Uh, you bet. Uh, yeah, yeah and th- these are some things that, like, we're using with uh, professional athletes, and and after they do a one of these exercises, we have this little thing where we we uh, time them in an activity, mm-hmm. and. And they time out at, you know, being able to do that activity in a certain amount of time. And then we stop for a little bit and have them um, do the same activity, but with the addition of an exercise, a brain exercise. Mm -hmm. And then we time it again. And, um, you know, sometimes people are cutting off a a third of the time that it, that is required for them to complete an activity. Or even I've seen people cut off a half half the amount of time that's required. So if you think of a professional athlete, um, like let's say a swimmer, Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes when they win an event, it could be by just a few hundredths of a second. Absolutely. So for them, they might be saving off, you know, just seconds. But for business owners, for entrepreneurs, imagine if they're saving off those seconds like every every single activity that they're doing during the day that it's faster oh, and yes. easier that, that that at the end of the day that that really is going to make a big difference yeah so it really really adds up mm yes i can totally uh, see that and so are there any pitfalls that your um, clients might not be aware of okay so Again, uh, some of the pitfalls that people might not be aware of is um, are number one that they may not be educated by me enough to know that they can even change this uh, problem or to know that there's even a solution to you know procrastination and not being able to get things done. So that's part of my job is to educate people. And then uh, another thing uh, along those lines of of having an open mind, I would just really um, encourage all of your listeners to keep open-minded because just like the, um, you know, the neuroplasticity, 
that was actually available. Uh, you know, that that was a possibility for a very long time, but it was only discovered a few years ago. So again, just because we think something isn't possible, a lot of times it's just because it has yet to be discovered. Um, so again, just know that this is definitely possible to reduce, um, you know, those problems around getting things done and to even eliminate many of them and to just make life and work a whole lot easier. <laughs> oh, that sounds, that sounds wonderful. That yeah. sounds wonderful. And so what do you think um, would be the main reason that a person may not buy from you? <laughs> Well, I think what? it would actually be the same as what I was just, we were just talking about, which is sometimes <clears throat> they don't think that anything can actually be done. Be done. Mm. That, um, you know, kind, kind of like in the, I'll say the olden days, but really only a few years ago, that people <clears throat> thought that they just had to, their brains had to degenerate because that's the way it was. And actually that isn't the way it is. So, and it's not the way that it is with being able to get over procrastination either. These yes. Days. So, as long as a person, again, can, you know, just be open to all possibilities. Um, and I can tell you because, um, you know, this is what I do every day. And I do know because I have a lot of success stories of people who have gotten over procrastination and, um Again, I kind of tease about it that, um, you know, work does not have to be a four-letter word. <laughs> yes, yes. So do you have um, a story you'd like to share with our listeners? Sure, sure. Um, there's one that kind of stands out for me, and this lady actually came into me as an athlete originally. And then as she started to age and uh, she came back in her 70s, and she was having some problems with, with focusing and it kind of finding her, you know, the, the correct words. So what we call those are word finding skills. And she was really concerned about it because she was concerned about her brain, uh, you know, degenerating. And she knew the type of work that we had done for her and that we did for other people. So she asked if there was anything that, that I could do for her. So I just told her that we could do, you know, some of the focusing exercises and see what happened for her. And um, I, what I didn't realize was that she had been doing a, an online program. Uh, and so they had tested her ability to concentrate independently of what we were doing, because of course I didn't even know she was going to this other place for testing. And right. so, um, I gave her some of these focusing exercises and guess what? Her, her focusing ability came up a hundred points and I've got to think back. I think it was something like four weeks or something like that. And oh, wow. she said that according to their testing, that was impossible according to oh. their testing to do. Amazing. Yeah. And she could find the words. <laughs> so she can find the words. <laughs> it was a happy ending for all. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. And also, I think it's important for the listeners to understand that um, there is, there's been a lot of, you know, scientific research behind what you do. Mm -hmm. That you know, it's not something that you just have thought of uh, or just read about, uh, you know, uh, and thought up. Uh, it's there is there's uh now really scientific research scientific evidence to uh back up uh your um your work yeah there there is more and more research all the time and um you know they they have said for a while that the brain is the final frontier but <laughs> um you know certainly we're finding out more and more every day and uh, and again you know some of us are are sort of out there on the edge of of, of pioneering in this yes. new, newer arena and making changes and seeing changes like the woman that I just mentioned um again we're we're working with with lots of different tools and um boy we're getting the results and that that's exciting to see actually yeah definitely so what what are you uh what solution are you um are you offering to overcome procrastination 
you mean how to get through it or just that they will No, how it? how you know what kind of service are you offering your your clients? Oh, um they can come in for a number of different services, but um mostly what we're doing is we're using some of the brain exercises and some of the uh, mindset exercises and getting through uh, releasing massive amounts of stress. Um, and so that all of those things together can really make the difference for people. Did I answer your question? Yes, that's oh, um, good. Yes, you did. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. that sounds very exciting. And um, if the listener wants to know more, how, how can they connect with you, Deborah? Oh, sure. Um, come to my website, which is www.yourfocusedsuccess.com. And again, it's www.yourfocusedsuccess.com. And that is um, Y-O-U-R-F-O-C-U-S-E-D-S-U-C-C-E-S-S.com. And... Um, we're offering all kinds of things. I do have a a webinar, which is coming up soon. So if people are interested, it's another way that I can educate people. And it's a free webinar, by the way. And they can just check in there and um, get signed up. I would love to to have all of you. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. And that way, we're finally going to get the things done that we want to do and in less time. And that sounds just just wonderful. Deborah, <laughs> thank you so so much for um uh coming to the show today. It was a real pleasure having you and um I'm looking forward to discovering more of these um these exercises. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Deborah. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.